And I think um, even across the cultures, and especially now where where South African music is and South African community after 20, where are we now? 24 years, 26 years of, of democracy. Um, the new South Africa can be heard in the sound of the choirs. And when they come here, it's just, mm -hmm. it's a message that's so strong mm -hmm. because of the South African spirit that's being transmitted. Good morning, Johan. It's so lovely to meet you here on Zoom. Good morning, Petra. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's such a great uh, privilege to have you. And, and um, we, just tell me first, where are you based? We are in South Tyrol. It's the most northern province of, of Italy. It's the, uh, um, many people say it's not, it's not Italy and it's not Austria, it's South Tyrol. It's a very peculiar okay. little province. And uh, you are originally from South Africa. Yes. So yes. what brought you then to uh, the south of Tyrol? Well, I, before we came here, um, I, was, I, I was a professor for choir music at the University of Pretoria. And then we felt that the city life got too much. And we, um, at that time, the position of director of music for the Drakensberg Boys Choir School opened. And then we decided, yes, and then we moved down to the mountains. When I say we, my wife and my two boys. So we, we started in, in the Drakensberg um, mountains, a new life, very calm, yet very busy as well. And the, the busy touring program brought, brought us to, um, to Europe almost every year. Um, but when I was still at the University of Pretoria, I used to guest conduct in Austria um, quite, quite often. And I made very good friends here in Brixen, where we live. Um, and one such friend, Clara Sattler, um, organized a concert for us with the boys. So we came and we gave the concert. And by that time, the University of Bolzano or Bautzen in, in German, where, where I am now, um, was still very young in university terms and the president of the university wanted to expand or to develop the music education department and um, he was at the concert and well I didn't even know but a year later back in South Africa I received an email to say would you like to come I offer you a post wow Yes, and then it, it wasn't a, an easy decision. So we had to really um, think hard about it and, and the future, not only my future, but our future as, as, as a family and also especially my two boys. So, and it's in a way, the decision was based on their future as well. Mm -hmm. For me, it's of course a wonderful opportunity, but for them um, having everything in Europe, it, it's just wonderful. Yeah, and I think it's very important what you're saying there as well, that it's not, it wasn't just about you, it was this the family and, and everything. And we don't always think about that when we think of an artistic career, that that is not always a career that you can um, pursue in one place, that you can always stay in one place. Sometimes it does take you to other places and, and you have to move. But then when you have a family, it also is that consideration. Absolutely, yes. Mm. But now tell me about your time at the Drakensberg uh, Boys Choir. Uh, what year were you there? So we moved in July 2008. Okay. Yes, so we were there for seven years. Um, and in a way, we knew that we would not stay there forever because it's very secluded. And then also um, the children, uh, fortunately, we have two boys. So so they, they joined the school, although only the one had the chance before we came here. Um, but then as from the old standard eight, what's that, grade 10, it's great. Then they have to then go to boarding school. <clears throat> okay. So we were not very fond of that idea, and and we thought, yes, we will, we we will see how long. Um, but we gave it ten years, and in the end, it was only seven. Then we came here. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
uh, okay. Yes, it was a lovely time. It's, uh, I mean, to, to live there, um, it's a bit secluded and it's fantastic. I mean, the mountains and the nature and and the privilege to work with with the boys each and every day. We had two choir rehearsals and one choir concert every week for the for the tourists and the public. Um, in a way, I had I had to leave it before I really could appreciate what I, I had as a, as a conductor, because now life is a little bit different in yeah. terms of conducting. But now the um, this opportunity, you, you have this opportunity now, but how much do you think the time at uh, the Drakensberg Boys Choir uh, sort of prepared you for this or is it completely totally different a different way of, of working yes my my professional life took took a um a different turn so to speak so as i've mentioned before i was um at the university of pretoria for 10 years um where research was partly part of my job description, but not so much because I was a conductor of, of, of the Turkey Kur, the Turks Kamarata then. So um, a research output uh, translates into, into many of the artistic outputs that I had. But, um, and the seven years at the, at the Boys Choir School was, was pure uh, managing the, the music program of the school and the choirs. And, and the tour touring and so on. Now, um, the Italian university system is quite rigid in terms of academic output. So my, my main responsibility is of course, teaching music education and also community music is another research field of mine. And then we have to um, do research as uh, um, in the second, second uh, uh, instant. And then there's also uh, in universities worldwide, there's also what we call the third mission. So it is making your research outputs known to the public and incorporating the community um, in, in, in terms of involving everyone. So, you know, in English, they say publish or perish. So it's it's a question of having to to do a lot of research and a lot of writing mm -hmm. um, and the conducting the idea was also that I would start a, um, a university choir because there, there was some efforts, but, um, but culturally it's also very difficult. What's interesting to know is that the university is a trilingual university. So our little province, because of the history of, of, of what happened during the first world war was annexed to Italy. Previously, it was it was part of Austria, um, and then since then, of course, um, the Italian government brought in uh, the Italian culture, and I mean, buses full of people were were brought in um, to Italianize actually the, the the whole region. So there's a lot of politics, and there's there was a lot of strife. Um, uh, what's that in English? Um, uh, Conflict. A conflict uh, yeah. about that. And um, so now in the end, after after many, many years of, of being part of Italy, um, it is interesting that the Italian culture exists in one channel and the German speaking culture exists in another channel. And then there's, of course, also actually a third language in the region, and that is Latin. Uh, not Latin, but Latin. Oh, okay. And that's related to to Rom uh, Romanish that they speak in in Switzerland. So, so it's it's a very old language. So there's the, the actually the three different cultural groups, uh, mm -hmm. and our university make uh, make provision for the three languages, but also English. So okay. it is um, yes, it's it, um, it's a very uh, it's a very strange way of teaching because there's an Italian. Uh, department and there's a German department. So walking in parallel the, the, the whole time or teaching in parallel the whole time. And mm -hmm. then, so 
that was an explanation to say that uh, starting a university choir is, it, we have an ensemble, which we call Unibetset Voices, um, but people that might know me from my previous life in, in South Africa, being a choir conductor and being a conductor of the Tux Comorata, would would um, know that there's no comparison between between a university choir in in Italy and the quality that we have in South Africa. So yes, we do sing, <clears throat> and there is an ensemble, and we have good concerts and nice concerts, but not on the level um, that that the South African spirit um, mm -hmm. can can be seen and heard. <laughs> That's wonderful that you say that. And, uh, um, and yeah, I'm sure, I mean, I spoke to quite a few South African singers and it's very interesting to also know that they come from choirs in South Africa, you know, that it's, it's uh, uh, choirs from the community or from the church and then that developed their singing. Uh, so South Africa is very well known, I think, for uh, all the choirs that, that are there. Yes, absolutely. Just yesterday we had a concert with my youth choir. So I, I, I also have a youth choir, the Provincial Youth Choir, South Torolian Youth Choir. The age is, is from... Uh, 16 to, to 27 so so the the, the type of voice and, and the type of youth that we work with it compares well with the south african university choir okay. very fine ensemble i'm very happy and privileged to be able to work with them and of course i bring my south african influences with and we yesterday we gave a premiere of a work by chris lamprecht the, the composer he especially wrote us a, a small work wow. and also from Prinslu, he's now on the other end of the age uh, uh, continuum. Uh, he's a young, upcoming Pretoria composer, and he also wrote us something. But then also, I um, I bring in some African folk music, and we had um, three folk songs in the program yesterday, and one person indeed commented on that afterwards to say, but what is it that African music and Africans have such a spirit? We don't understand the words, but there's something that's being transmitted. And uh, now, after seven years in Italy, now I, um, I can really see it and pinpoint it. When we get visits from South African choirs, it's just, it's a, it's a different world. It's a different mentality. It's a different spirit that we transmit through our music and i think um even across the cultures and especially now where where south african music is and south african community after 20 where are we now 24 years 26 years of of democracy um the new south africa can be heard in the sound of the choirs and when they come here it's just it's a message that's so strong because of the South African spirit that's being transmitted. You give me goosebumps now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but tell me about this research that you're doing, because we're talking about uh, also the spirit of, you know, South Africa, and, and it has to do with community as well. But you were mentioning that you, part of the research is community music. Yes. So community music is... Um, there's different understandings of community music. So um, if you dissect the two words, community music, it's the music of a community. But how do you define a community? So community can be, um, can be a very specific community. So let's say it is the, um, it is the Catholic uh, church community's choir. That is a form of community music then you could also see it as a specially new created community. So I advertise, for instance, we have a um, ukulele group on Thursday evenings and everyone that would like to, to, to come would be welcomed. That's yet another new, new community that's created. So it is all, and then there's old age home uh, music appreciation groups. So there's a, there's a lot of, of examples of what community music can be. 
But what's very important in the international arena of community music is the concept of inclusion. So it is very much about inclusion and also social upliftment, that the music activities that you that you do with people must be inclusive. So for instance, a typical choir where auditions are held would not be seen as a typical community music because you exclude people based on, on the fact that they cannot sing well enough or whatever. So community music is all about inclusion and, and also the social upliftment of the, the, um, the, the participants. In that regard now, we have a very interesting project that's, that's just started uh, because we live so close, you as well in Vienna, um, to the Ukrainian crisis that we have a project with Ukrainian youth um, that are in, in, um, in South Tyrol, that we have community music project with them, together with their parents, if they are or work accompanied by their parents. But it's, it's, it's a matter of giving relief um, from, from the worries, giving support in terms of their um, being taken up into the host community. Um, we do not know how, how long they will stay, but just to make life easier for them um, by means of making music together. And also, it's not only Ukrainian uh, people, but there are also some other people, some other youths um, that that come not so much, but um, and that once again gives gives the opportunity for the for the multicultural infusion happening. Um, so it is not um, it's not meant to be a musical product that will win us a Grammy, not at all. Um, it it is really a process of making music. And um, one technique that's used is actually songwriting. So to, to guide the participants to be able to, to, uh, to write a song about their experiences. So we guide them how to write the text, a typical song test, text, and then we, we experiment with melodies and we experiment with, with different forms of, of accompaniment. Um, and in the end, the result will be um, their own song with their own created text and their own um, input of melodies. Um, in a way then culminating in, a, in an autobiography of, of their stories. But isn't this just so wonderful that in now also in, through what you're saying now, that is actually proof that um, art and music uh, really brings people together and across uh, cultures and it's a way of of also healing you know a way of these people coming from like you say a, a war torn country where there's now something that they can work together with um, and and create a, an, an art and of course I think this will also be something very special because it will be related to that you know to re related to this war situation for them absolutely one cannot di 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 divorce oneself from 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 your background and and from your your um, immediate circumstances and and that's what makes it special so so you cannot just switch off and and and, yeah. and start all over again we as south africans living abroad know that it's just not possible you cannot do away with your with your roots um, and the same for 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 this people in the Unibetsed Voices that I mentioned, um, I have one singer um, from Ukraine, and it just happened coincidentally. We stumbled across uh, uh, um, across each other's paths. Um, I was in the foyer of university asking for the key, and I used the word music room. And she and her mother was standing there, were standing in the foyer, um, just having arrived, looking for some some places to sing and, and make music and further her studies. And she's, then she heard the word music room and we started chatting. And I said, yes, well, yeah, hello, I'm the man. Come, please. Yeah. <laughs> and she started singing. And on the 9th and 10th of June, we have a wonderful concert in support of the Ukrainian war. 
Uh, that that sounds wrong in support of the Ukraine. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and where she's going to sing? It turned out that she's actually a, a pop singer, young girl, twenty years old, but she's a pop singer, and now she sings in the choir. And I made a little arrangement for for a string orchestra and a choir that will accompany her in one of her songs. Wonderful. Yeah. So wow. so it's yeah. it's a wonderful co- combination of things where where the um, the sad truth of the war also brings some noy, uh, new influences yeah. um, into each other's lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've also the, the South African singers that I spoke to mentioned also this, that being part of this choir in the townships, for example, that gave them something to work towards, that gave them sort of also protection from from uh, going in the wrong direction or, or or being with with people that might have influenced them in the wrong way. So the choir itself meant to them also a lot, and it it gave them also a better life in a way. Yes, I can talk for hours on this because I'm a choir junkie. So <laughs> um, choir choir is is a lifesaver. I mean, there, there's there's so so much benefits to to be able to first of all for a child to make music, but then to be able to sing, and then to be able to sing in a choir where you actually belong to a small community where you are supported, and more important so where you are guided, as you say that they felt guided to to go in 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 the right path. In the years of 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 um, singers that have passed through the choirs that I conducted, I can I can testify about that. So many of them that have said, but you know, I I would not ever have followed the music career, or I would I would not have ever um, discovered the joy of singing, and that brought me my my life partner, or um, or it steered me in into wanting to study further. Um, and to belong to to a certain type of, of of people, and there I'm not being snobbish. Certain type of people, I mean, it is yeah. it is a certain soul that wants to make music and carry on with that activity, and that we see in South Africa in comparison with um, with the European culture. I mean, especially Italy. You always think, oh, Italy, you know, it's the mm. country of singing. But as they say in in in, in German, Jain, in Afrikaans, yeah. Jain, yeah, um, because it's not always um, always the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, music education and singing in schools are are hopelessly neglected. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's the solo singing. Yes, the bel canto style that's very prominent in the conservatoires and so on. Um, but the, the the in terms of choir singing and the involvement of the youth in in music activities, one can really look to South Africa for a good example of of how it can be done. And it's not only the the school choirs, because here in our little province there's almost no school choirs. It really? sounds yes, it sounds strange, but there's there's. Um, I can count the school choirs that are really active on my one hand in the whole province. So they have singing projects that that they call, and then they maybe sing for two months um, in more than one voice, and they call it a choir. But having said that, there's also fantastic projects in the rest of the yeah. Uh, there's also very good choirs. Um, I'm just trying to establish the fact that that South Africa has a wonderful system of providing for the children. And then after that as well, if we look at the university choirs, uh, the, the quality, the standard of the university choirs in South Africa. And then um, I hope someone will make a study about that actually, because to show the, the offspring of university choirs, I can just think of, of my, my own example when I was a student. Uh, it was such a wonderful enrichment to sing. You wanted to carry on singing. And that created the chamber choir. And now if I look at what's happening um, in, in all of the cities where the major university choirs are, there's so many offspring choirs. 
that and and there's there's a richness of adult choirs and chamber choirs um because of the influence of um or because of the infra infrastructure that was created yeah. for to sing but i think also that singing itself you know and and music there's this misconception that you only you can only be in a choir if you're an excellent singer and of course on that level that you're talking now where it's a university choir and it's it's more sort of about the 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 quality of the voices but there are also a way of singing in choirs you know if you just have if you just do it for the love of it if you just do it as coming together and singing you know and i think this is also missing in society nowadays that people don't sing in groups anymore if we don't want to call it a choir if it's not the quality is not good but this singing in groups together for just socially you know just being yeah. social together absolutely now nowadays um, they uh, they coined the term collective singing okay. uh, not to not to be too um uh not to scare people to to, to use the word choir yeah Okay. And there's also um, in our, um, I like the word collective singing very much because if you are a purist choir mm -hmm. uh, singer or a choir fan or a choir conductor, then you think when you think in terms of choir as an art form. Mm -hmm. So with, with, with all types of art forms, you, you have to have a, a palette for it. And yeah. if we look at the art form, just look at the painting. I mean, there's certain techniques to be able to master, to produce it. And also with choir singing in the real sense of the word. So there's this intonation, this blend, there's, there's a myriad of things that, that must happen before you can, according to me, call it a yeah. choir. But mm -hmm. collective singing is, is something else. And there's strength in, in that, just, mm -hmm. just to bring voices together. Um, yeah. that's yet again a whole new discussion but what what happens um with a good feel good hormones when you experience yeah. that that's um there's so many po possibilities mm -hmm. so now um so your work there you say that's uh, mostly this research work and and then the choirs uh that you you put together is this now um, how long are you planning to to do this? Until uh, until I stop, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> People ask us. Um, so when are you going back? Oh, okay. And, and mm -hmm. I don't know if you get the same question. Yeah. So yeah. When are you going back? And and our answer is well, we don't think we're going back. It's not mm -hmm. that we don't want to, especially my wife and I, we, we will go back tomorrow, mm -hmm. but the reality is different. So we have two boys that's now 20 and 18 years old. Um, what future will they have if we as a family go back now? Yeah. They are schooled in, in German and Italian, so they will adapt very difficult in, in a South African academic system. And most probably they will find their life partners in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, what are we going to do in, in the South, uh, sitting in, in our little strand I see and still buy? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Then we are far from them and now pretty grand. It is, so, yeah. so yes, so we're not planning on going back. Although mm -hmm. our uh, our hearts and our souls are there, um, but we we created a new life for us here, mm -hmm. and I'm very privileged at the university. Um, I, I I have a full professorship in music education, so it's uh, um, it's a privilege to be able to to have security, job security, and my wife is also a music teacher, and she also had to reinvent herself totally. Um, because the educational system here is so much different from, from what we are used to in South Africa. Um, so she also had to, to find new, um, new ways of using her gift as a music teacher. And yes, so we are, we are here until we, we, we have to go. I have to work until I'm 70 years old. So th that's another 14 years. I'm 56 now. 
Okay. Another 14 years, but then we want to retire in Tuscany because oh, Tuscany wonderful. is very close to the Midlands. Oh, and okay. The feeling and the hills. And mm -hmm. so, yes, Tuscany stole our hearts. Is that your, yeah, that's the place. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you with uh, saying heart and soul. You, you feel uh South African, but you also know uh, some realities when you've once you've left the country. That's also difficult then to to go back and and see a future there. I think absolutely. And every time that we go back, it's more clear that we will not go back. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, so it, it's not only the. Uh, I don't think we have to talk about the 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 deterioration that happens mm -hmm. with the South African infrastructure and, and so on. Um, that's sad to see and sad to hear, you know, um, but, but it still remains a wonderful country. Yeah. And the spirit of the country. I mean, the, um, our, uh, our family, you might also have family there. That's, that's not a question. And we will be able to survive there. Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I, but as I said, uh, yeah, but, things keeping us mm -hmm. here. Yeah, I know it's uh, wonderful people also in South Africa that that do a lot and do sometimes a lot of things without uh, also the outside world knowing. You know that uh, there's a lot going on there. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, but we must also say that we uh, we got to know each other through uh, somebody that was in the choir with me, Fushia Williams. Yeah. Yes, with you and with me. <laughs> oh, and he was with you. Yeah, with me yeah. He was, and, and when I was in school and I think with you at university level. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fushia and I sang in the University of Pretoria choir as students yeah. and we were both baritones and <laughs> We, we 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 were good partners, standing okay. next to each other. Oh, yes, okay. and we kept kept contact all the um, all the years, um, mm -hmm. and we actually saw each other now three years ago at at a reunion of the choir. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow! Yeah. Now we were together in school since grade one. So, oh. uh, yeah. So and sang in the choir, and yeah. So isn't it wonderful that you have, you know, that like you said, the, these connections also that you built through choirs is is so wonderful. And I've also actually done an interview with uh, Franco Prinsler. Oh yes. Yeah, I did the the, the uh, composition for you that you said for the choir. Mm. Uh, also, a wonderful musician in South Africa or, or a choir conductor that's doing a lot of great work that I really admire a lot for what he's doing. Absolutely. Yeah. He is really, I mean, together with many others, but Franco, uh, um, the young and upcoming generation, Peter Beseidner, and then there's Neil van der Watt, wonderful composer. Then there's um, Chris Lamprecht. He's 95 years old, and he, he, he wrote us um, a, a piece of music, especially for the youth choir. Amazing. 95 years old, and it's such a such a little gem that that he wrote. But there's there's so so much about South African music that that the outside world do not know. They only know when our singers migrate and our instrumentalists migrate, um, and then then they think. Ah, but the quality. There must be something in the country, and it's the it's the foundation. I think that that they received, and unfortunately, it cannot bloom in South Africa because there's not an infrastructure and opportunities for that. Yeah, that's the sad. That's really the sad part, and that's what everybody's saying. Uh, you know that there's just not that support for them. Absolutely. But now, Johan. Um, Apart from the house that you're going to have in Tuscany, what is your wishes? For, uh, what are your wishes for the future, Pietro? I think the my my biggest wish is is for 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 peace and happiness and health. Mm -hmm. So um, where we are, that we that we actually accept uh, 
where we are. And if, if I sound, if I'm complaining, it's, it's not complaining. If I do complain, I, I, I might complain with, with a little chocolate cake under the arm because everything is, <laughs> is, is going well. So, so my, yes, my, my hope is, is that my children will be, will be, um, uh, successful and happy where they are. They are both also um, in the music music. Oh, area. okay. Mm -hmm. My oldest is now um, studying at the Mozarteum in in Salzburg, mm -hmm. and the youngest is finishing his school. He still has one year, but he's um, playing a recorder. So, oh, okay. And mm -hmm. old music. He's specializing in, in old music. Uh, so we will see what the future f future holds, but. In short, um, success and security for, for my children, and then um, a nice view for my wife and I in Tuscany. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome to come and visit. <laughs> yeah, I'll come and visit. And what a wonderful, uh, this is one of the greatest wishes that I've, that I've had so far. A wonderful view from Tuscany. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Johan, and now just one more thing. You'll have to, uh, can you do a little shout out for a restaurant or coffee shop in your area? They're in the south of Tyrol. Where do you go for coffee? Oh, I mean, since we've been living here, we, we have become coffee snobs. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So okay. whenever we go back to South Africa, we, we take our little Italian mocha pot with <laughs> Because I, I cannot drink South African coffee anymore. <laughs> um, no, there's there, there's wonderful coffee shops. So so I I cannot name one coffee shop. Okay. Um, but I can recommend uh, restaurants. Uh, yeah. Many. I mean, there's there, there, there's so many actually. That's good. That's one thing. And and once again, maybe people that see me in this interview will see there's a little bit more of me. <laughs> <laughs> because of the quality of the food the quality of the food is wonderful what's so fantastic here is that mm -hmm. the combination of the of the german kitchen oh, yeah. the austrian mm -hmm. kitchen and the italian kitchen mm -hmm. but i mean when i say say the combination you know then it comes together and it's just it's just a taste explosion mm -hmm. uh, then but the italian food i mean the italian food is just it's 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 just fantastic so we have a restaurant we live in the old city mm -hmm. um and you know there's the Domplatz, the, the church square with a big cathedral um in the little town of brixton and we live 100 meters from the cathedral so we live slap dash oh, in wonderful. the center yes very privileged to live in a in in an old building that was built in the 1200s. Wow. We have wooden ceilings that's carved out where you can still see that it was actually the servant quarters of the Hofburg. Um, and the Hofburg was the seat of the bishop for very long here. And that, so we live in the, the, the servant quarters where they actually did some wood carvings on the ceilings um, where you can see which house was which one we live in the um very aptly so we live in the house where they made wine so oh wow yeah. oh that's great fantastic yes so we have kutcherhof a very good restaurant um close by and then we have um another restaurant de Cantai, which also uh, um, do not make the normal food because there are many restaurants where you can actually just make a copy of the of, of the menu and you know because oh, yeah. it's yeah. knödel and wiener schnitzel and all, all the um, all the normal stuff but these two and then there's another one um venice just on on the cathedral square as well where they really make some um, connoisseur food very good Really? Okay. Well, I'm a schnitzel girl. I love a good Wiener schnitzel. So yes, yeah, a, a good one. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. <not> a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Johan, this was so lovely to talk to you and so insightful. And I think you're doing great work there and and inspiring the 
the community there as well. And I'm, I really think the work, also the choir that you're doing for the Ukrainian uh, people that's coming in, in or that's there, it's so wonderful that you do that. Thank you. That's I will send you a link if you want to maybe. I will put the link. Yeah, send me the link and, yes. and any link to the choirs that, uh, that I can put on or a YouTube link as well that, so we can listen to them. So yes. that would be great. Okay. I will do so. Thank you, Johan. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you, Petra. It was lovely chatting to you. Thanks. Lovely talking to you too. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.